Hello, everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to the Hub Live Q&A with Rob Roy. How are you, Rob? Great, Dax. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm very excited as we go into a weekend with Father's Day coming. So early happy Father's Day to you, Rob. Yeah, right back at you. Appreciate <laughs> it. And for everyone, don't forget, uh, the markets are closed on Monday for Juneteenth. So uh, get your trades in before the, before the end of the day, but also get your questions coming in here today. It's, uh, we're here to answer all of your questions for the day. Before we jump into the Q&A, uh, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, the numbers keep growing. It's, it's great work on this channel. All right, Rob, what are we going to start looking at? Should we do have a look at the SPY? Sure. Um, the Qs, the SPY, whatever you want to look at. So uh, bring up the uh, SPY. Uh, it's interesting. There's a lot of chatter about how uh, the SPY is up over uh, 20%, but the equal weighted S&P is up 3% year to date. So, you know, it's the usual suspects, those uh, handful of uh, AI tech stocks that are driving the uh, S&P up as well. But uh, we're starting to get a little bit vertical here. Uh, we'll talk more about this in the uh, market update later, but you can see there's the 10 day moving average, the separation. So um, it, it's a wave three, so it doesn't look like it's done going to the upside, but it looks like it needs to rest a little bit to uh, to gain some more energy. Maybe a long holiday weekend is exactly what the market needs to uh, to rest a bit, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I get a little bit nervous when things start going vertical. Anybody that's been watching knows I don't like it when things go vertically. I much prefer the 45 degree angle. So perhaps we're uh, getting a little FOMO or something going on here. But uh, yeah, I think that just Warren's keeping an eye on the uh, vertical nature of that move and the fact that we're just a little bit overbought short term here. Yeah, well, before we jumped online, we were talking about, and I've got the notes here in front of me, Goldman Sachs marquee clients had a quick poll. 59% of their of the investors are bearish. Uh, so maybe you see a little bit more of a squeeze, Rob? Uh, I think, yeah. I mean, from a contrarian standpoint, that that's a pretty high number, which is surprising. But uh, yeah, you get nearly 60% people that are, that are bearish. There's your fuel to continue the rally right there. So maybe we just rest a little bit uh, and then continue on to the upside. The software, for whatever reason, likes this area around 460. So we could be headed there. Amazing with uh, the, the Fed I mean, announcing more rate hikes that uh, we just ignored that and powered higher. So, I mean, just, you, you know, the trend is your friend, as they say. Uh, we've got a, qu a quick stock that's come in here early. It's uh, Spotify, S-P-O-T. Now, obviously, there's a lot of news around them with uh, Harry and Megan's uh, podcast getting booted off. Yeah, um, it, well, they were the number one new one, and uh, and now they're gone, you know, all in a year. It's, that's uh, how does that work? So, um, well, you, I didn't listen to it. I don't know if you did. <laughs> no, I, I never did either. But they they won some award as best new podcast, and then by the end of the year, they're they're out. So I guess people got tired of it really quick. Uh, novelty for a short period of time. Uh, but looking at Spotify, uh, pretty interesting that we uh, are breaking from this area here uh, at 150 uh, in today's trade. You can see where we tried to do it uh, right at the beginning of June. No follow through day. We talk about it all the time when you break a major point of support, resistance, moving average, break out of a triangle, whatever. You have to have a follow through day. It's not uh, it hasn't been there, but this looks like a, a more determined move, if you will. So we'll have to wait till Tuesday, see if we can get some follow through here. But if we can, then uh, I think we could see an extension on that uh, wave five. So if we look at the DMI, um, it's turning back up. The separation between the uh, directional indicators is occurring again. So it looks like uh, it may be setting for another run, but it has to have that follow through day uh, on Tuesday uh, first, but um, it's giving it a good shot. Um, listen, we've got a double one first up here, and that's where obviously we've gone back to crypto world and a lot happening in the crypto space, right? Because now BlackRock's uh applied for its own Bitcoin ETF. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see if that goes through. And Grayscale would not be happy if that happened, right? Um, but we want to look at Bitcoin first and then Coinbase, okay. And we've been talking about this for a while, Ducks, on uh, on Bitcoin, this 27,000 level and how it needed to hold. Uh, and also, uh, as we were holding 27,000, kept reminding people to keep in the back of their minds the fact that none of this vertical move 
from 20,000 to 27,000 had been retraced yet. Well, now that's starting to occur. We have a negative cross between the 1030 moving averages there. We're below the 50 day moving average. And that analogy of the fingernails hanging on the edge of a cliff at 27,000 has now gone. We've fallen, <laughs> we've fallen down into the ravine, if you will. Uh, but uh, we've got a little bit of support right here uh, at the 25,000 level that it's trying to hold, which was that wave three top. So I do feel better about the fact that we're starting to retrace a little of this vertical move because that normally happens. Uh, and had we just powered up and continued higher from uh, the 30,000 level, I would have still been concerned about this. So to get this out of the way and over with before that howling process starts again the first quarter of next year seems healthy to me, honestly. I know it doesn't feel good for people that are long or holding Bitcoin, uh, but this th this feels pretty healthy as far as a chance to gather itself and, and start its run into the uh, uh, first quarter of next year. So I like the fact that this is happening. We've been talking about it for quite some time that it it, it likely needed to. And so now it is. So a uh, little bit of a pullback here, let it run its course. And then I think it's setting up for another run to the higher, to the upside. Okay. And then obviously Coinbase has all its things going on with the SEC and so forth. Yeah, that's the problem with it. You could ask about this one a lot. And uh, this, this is really hard when you have this kind of uh, news, you know, the regulatory bodies all over it. You never know what's going to come out. Uh, on an individual day. So th this is just kind of hands off for me uh, right here until um, uh, the government gets uh, done doing whatever they're going to do to them or whatever regulations they're wanting to put on. But uh, you see just so many headlines that come out. Uh, it's held 50. Uh, if you wanted to take a real speculative shot, you could here. It's gotten back a little doji though today, but again, holiday weekend. So who knows if that's playing above in January, tested it and has held that 50 level since then. So if you're looking for a speculative uh, trade in that space, perhaps you know the regulatory issues start to die down and it's able to take off because it's a pretty easy trade, 50 is your stop. So if you're looking for something, again, from a speculative standpoint in this space, give it a shot now and if it breaks 50, you're out. Um, we've got a question here from the Catalina. Um, I think. Catalina might have put two stocks in, meant to have a different one, but Snowflake is one stock that they want to look at. Uh, yeah, that one has um, <laughs> has been a rocky road here. It gapped down uh, on its earnings report, stayed there for one day, rocketed back up, and then gave a little bit of it back. And uh, and you can see it's, uh, it's powered higher uh, off its highs today, but it was overbought. So if we go back and take today off, and that's one of the cool things about this hub software is you can walk back days and see what was going on. Uh, you can see that uh, on uh, yesterday's close, we we're pretty separated from the 10 day moving average. So then opening higher today, um, just too, too far overbought. We are hitting that tap box, time and price projection on the wave five. So perhaps we're starting to get to an area where it may find some resistance. It looks like it wants to try to make it to 200. I'd be shocked if getting this close, he's used the analogy of, uh, you know, the old Star Trek tractor beam uh, where they uh, pull it. Uh, it's like those major moving averages do that. It's just like it draws it right to it. So to get this close to 200, I feel like we're going to hit it. It's the exact uh, middle point of this uh, wave five projection. We're just a little overbought right now. So let it rest a day or two. It's trying to hold above the wave three highs right in here, uh, even on the low uh, today. So uh, I think we see 200 on Snowflake. And then I think we have to take a look at it again and see if it has any more energy left. <clears throat> um, good question here on AMD from Manuel. It looks a bit toppy. And like when you do look at that chart, it's doing a lot of work up here. Like, does it come back and fill that gap? Yeah, AMD used to be, I can remember the days when uh, uh, people would ask about AMD every single week during Trade Finder, every, every week, just like clockwork, and then kind of gone away. And now it's uh, having a little bit of resurgence here uh, with this move to the upside. Yeah, the gap is, uh, is certainly a concern, especially when we have this uh, wave three to the upside here, uh, knocking against resistance there at 130. Uh, and then we have um, the support level here. Uh, at 120. So it's breaking below the 10 day moving average today, which is a concern. So I like, I agree with what you're saying. It's looking a little toppy. And I would feel a lot better if it just got it out of the way. Just come fill this gap at 110, come down, test the 50 day moving average, reset itself, 
and then perhaps we can go higher. However, if you're long AMD right now, I wouldn't get out unless it broke below 120. Uh, give it a chance to hold. It did back in May and June, uh, the beginning of June. So give it another chance to see if it can hold this 120 level. So I wouldn't bail yet if I was long, but I wouldn't enter a long position right now either uh, to see if it does hold 120. If it does hold it and it bounces back, then uh, you can look to enter then. Um, but yeah, the, the gap is, that's a concern uh, at this point right now to see if it uh, doesn't want to come fill that first. So yeah, that, that's a tougher one. Um, another great question here from Manuel, and probably spent a lot bit of time on this one. Um, Art closely tracking Tesla, but Kathy Wood sold all their Tesla this week. Uh, how is that correlation going to go going ahead? <laughs> I I don't know. Did did, did you see uh, where she came out and said Bitcoin's going to a million? No, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. She also said that by 2030, Bitcoin will be at a million. So. Um, you know, I guess she's taking the money and run with this big, um, you know, third, uh, and perhaps her position was just too large and, and she needed it to offset other things. So, um, yeah, so that was, that's kind of interesting, but, um, you know, it, Tesla looks as strong as it can be. Again, the gaps in these, these little gaps uh, are concerning. At some point in time, it feels like we need to have a little bit of a pullback. We're so vertical in the market. A lot of these stocks with the gaps up. Uh, it would be a healthier, I can tell you, if it would come back down, get back to these 10-day moving averages, fill these gaps, and, and gather ourselves. So the market needs a rest. Um, it needs a rest. It needs a little bit of a pullback. Um, I, I think maybe towards the end of the year, we could see something a little bit more. And one thing I wanted to discuss with you real quick, Ducks, is uh, you know we're, we're moving towards uh, the end of the quarter here at the end of June. And uh, Tuesday night during Fast Money, the one show that I watch on the financial networks or somebody that said last year was the one of the worst performing years for money managers in history. And they're way behind again for the first quarter or the first half of this year. Um, and so you think maybe there may be some performance chasing, you know, end of quarter bonuses for these big investment managers. So um, I guess my point here is that I do feel the market needs to rest, but I'm not sure it's going to do it between now and the end of June. Seems like a, a more uh, appropriate time, you know, that uh, there may be some money pouring in to try to get their performances up to to match the market uh, going into their end of quarter bonuses. And then perhaps in July, we get a little bit of a rest and pullback and, and then try to make another run. I feel like towards the last quarter, we're likely going to see some recessionary pressures. Uh, and then that's when the whole thing could come to an end. But man, those are just uh, outlines of what could happen. Just a thought I wanted to share with you about the uh, end of quarter. Um, can we have a look at the ARC chart uh, for Manuel? Yeah. Uh, does he want ARKK? Is that the one? Yeah, ARKK. Yeah, okay. Um, and you can see that, um, you know, she's probably feeling a bit better right now uh, with the uh, move back to the upside, but not quite, you know, when she was being ballyhooed all over the place. So still down considerably. Um, so that's, that's why it's kind of interesting that she would pick this time, uh, to get out of Tesla that, you know, it's, it's just odd timing to me, I think. Uh, and you know, her, uh, performance here the, from a technical standpoint on the, uh, ETF is, uh, uh, right here at resistance there. So she was there back in February, fell again and came back up a lot of that driven by Tesla. And then she's going to get out. And so, you know, it, it, it's interesting. Uh, for sure, no five wave pattern going on here. So this is all corrective stuff. So now we see what happens here. Um, and, you know, it is tied to the performance of the other stocks. So I think you put a little less weight in the technicals here because of the stocks that are involved. Uh, but I would be a little concerned. You, you take Tesla out of the mix, then what happens? So, yeah, we'll we'll see where that goes. But uh, as far as the exact chart here, it's at, it's at resistance right now. Uh, another one to look at uh, just came through from the uh, from the Catalina. Uh, she wanted to look at Beyond Meat, B Y N D. Yeah, we had a um, a real nice um, sideways trade butterfly uh, on this, and um, uh, it ran up. And the fact that it held ten uh, is really key. Uh, but you know these ridiculous valuations that it had back in in COVID, you know where. Um, 
everybody's going to start buying, uh, you know, vegetable based <laughs> meats. It's not, you know, a healthier choice, alternative to meat, all that kind of stuff. Uh, clearly had some insane valuations back then. It's come back down to earth here. Uh, but there is some institutional ownership here, and they stepped in at 10, as you can see. And why we talk about this stuff, right, Ducks, is uh, it matters um, because if the stock breaks below 10, uh, growth minded or growth investment objective mutual funds institutions, they have to sell and they don't want to do that because then that means they're going to realize these big old losses here. Uh, and that goes into their performance. So they'd rather just come in and support it. Uh, keep it going, see if they can generate some sort of a short covering rally, whatever. But it is interesting right now. So good good timing on the question, uh, Catalina, because uh, we've got a little bit of a triangle here. It's a small one, uh, but it is a, a triangle nonetheless right here at 13. Uh, so the mouth of it's a couple points wide. So you're going to get a breakout on uh, BYND probably next week by the looks of this. A couple point move. Um, could be up or down, and you could see if it comes to the downside, it may be coming to test 10 again. Uh, but if it breaks to the upside, then it's got some resistance right here around 16. So, yeah, two or three point move. So, is it 16? Is it 10? You, you don't know on a triangle, but uh, yeah, um, pretty interesting time to take a look at that chart. So, a uh, good one. Strangle and strangle looks good to me on this one right now. I was thinking exactly the same thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to keep those questions coming in. There are some great questions coming through. The next one we're going to look at is Meta. And it looks like it's closing a gap from February 2022. And that's from Manuel again. Yeah, gosh, they've been um, really talking about um, that. And this, I, I was thinking that maybe they, because I know they did a lot of cost cutting. They laid a lot of people off. They're getting their uh, balance sheet in line, et cetera. Um, but I thought the whole reason they did this was because they were going to continue to spend on the metaverse, but apparently they've backed off on yeah. that. Uh, and the fact that they've backed off on that has, you know, given the stock, look at these gaps. I, I don't know how you chase this one here. It isn't a wave three, got a little doji today. So I think we're going to see this a lot with the holiday weekend, Ducks, is you're going to see a lot of charts that, you know, just kind of square positions here going into the holiday weekend, three days, who knows what can happen, you know, in this environment that we have. Um, but that's that's the kind of move you want to see. That's what I like, the 45-degree angle moves. So this looks really strong to me. Um, and I, again, don't like the gaps, but when you've got that kind of a move uh, and then you look at the, uh, the DMI and the ADX, when it just hangs out like that, it, it's continued strength. Uh, and until it breaks back below 40, um, but, the, you know, these two directional indicators are separating again. There's more buying pressure coming in. Um, so it, when, when you see a, a chart like that, it probably runs until you get one of those vertical moves, which is the, uh, you know, the, the, the FOMO thing comes in and the, uh, um, the uh, um, blow off top type of scenarios that occur when people begin to chase it. But right now it's just under accumulation. Uh, that's when you get these little bars and you go in a 45 degree angle, institutions are accumulating it. And so they like what they see with the, with the business uh, model that uh, Mr. Zuckerberg's doing. So um, I, you know, it, it could continue higher. It, it looks really, it looks as strong as it can be. So where, where does it go? That's the difficult thing in a wave three is how far, because it doesn't even really have zigzag patterns. I mean, it is such in a 45 degree angle. That's really impressive. Uh, one I missed from earlier, and apologies for this, uh, Oracle, they actually reported back on Monday, and they were good numbers. It's a great dividend-paying stock, too. Uh, Oracle's, they just print money, don't they? I mean, yeah. uh, they're, they're something else. But, you know, I can't chase this. My, my disciplines won't let me do it. Uh, and so, um, you know, we had already started vertically here uh, from 100, and then then, you know, just the insane move uh, on earnings. So uh, it's just in the stratosphere for me. Uh, it's impressive, uh, no doubt. Let's we'll see if we take a look at the volume, see what the volume looks like here. Uh, they, you know, that's big, big buying obviously coming in. That's institutional buying to get that kind of uh, uh, volume bars. The retail public doesn't have that kind of strength. So um, it, I, I don't think that we give a whole lot of this back, but I can't chase it right now. I'm not that far from the 10-day moving average, not that vertical of a move. 
I would love to see it come back and consolidate somewhere around in here. I don't know that it needs to come all the way down and fill the gap, but you know, that'll be in the back of your mind moving forward, but I don't know that it needs to do that now, but it definitely needs to, to back off a little bit here, uh, do some backing and filling on this uh, impressive move. Uh, but with that kind of institutional buying coming in, uh, I think a good part of the move holds probably consolidates for a while and then maybe you get another run, but I, I just couldn't chase that move, but uh, it, is, it is pretty cool to see uh, Oracle that, you know, it doesn't really seem to get exciting moves uh, lately uh, to, to do something like that. It also tells you the kind of market we're in, doesn't it, Ducks? I mean, it just uh, some of these moves are so exaggerated that uh, it, it, that's got to be in the back of your mind, too, that all this stuff's going to come back down to earth at some point. Well, it's like for a quick sidebar, I'm not sure if you saw this IPO yesterday, Carver, C-A-V-A. Yep. I did. I watched that. And that, it, yeah, yeah, that's a perfect example. Wasn't that nuts? Um, you know, it, went, it was at 19 to 21, then it went 31 to 33. And what did it open up in the 40s or something like that? And, yeah. uh, you know, those, those those investment bankers were like, damn it. You know, <laughs> they left all that money on the table. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I don't know how uh, excited Kava was. I forget who the uh, underwriter was, but it was uh, JP Morgan. Was it J.B. Morgan? Uh, yeah, they left a lot of money on the table. But, it, you know, is it, you know, to, to go back to Greenspan, you mentioned Greenspan earlier, is it a rational exuberance? It sure seems like it. I mean, I know the the whole thing is that they're going to be the new version of Chipotle. I don't think so, um, based on what I've looked at. But who knows? You know, I, who knows? You know, they're playing to that 21 to 25-year-old generation. And, uh, yeah, you know, maybe it takes off. I don't know. But it did that valuation seemed awfully rich. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, I don't know that it can hold that, but yeah. Very yeah, interesting it's, story. It's there. hard to get some technical analysis on something's been trading for two days. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, what, what is the symbol, Kava? I don't even, I think yeah. CAVA. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's, so it's we, we, down nearly four bucks today. Yeah. See, I mean, yeah, there's no technicals on, on that. But uh, when you were, when you're looking, see, it's already coming back down, but it, it was the last price I had seen before it opened was. 31 or 29 to 31 uh and then you can see where it opened uh way up here right at what 42 or 3 which yeah. is which is nuts and so for people that aren't familiar with how underwriting works uh they they do their best because the idea is that you you can you you match the desire the um uh, interest, uh, the demand is the word I was looking for. So you try to set the price when you open it exactly where the demand, uh, supply and demand would be. Uh, and then the underwriter and the company make the most, most money when that occurs. Uh, but when you price it at 31 and then it opens at, you know, 45 or whatever, that difference in that spread is all money that the underwriters could have made and, you know, I'm whatever agreement they have with the company. So that's why I'm saying a lot of money was left on the table. So the people that bought in uh, with the uh, IPO price, we're loving it. And they, I don't know if they don't have a lockup period or what, if they're bailing already today, or if that was it for the demand, who knows? But uh, usually when you do that, you got a, you got a lockup period and you can't, um, you can't sell immediately. So I don't know. I don't know the details of that underwriting agreement, but anyway. Yeah, it's usually 90 to 180 days. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah it priced at $21. So anyone who got stuck at $21 is a happy camper. Oh gosh. It went even lower than, uh, than uh, last I'd seen before it came out. So yeah. Well, yep. Um, all right, so we could talk about that for a while, but let's move on more of these questions. Sorry, everyone, but <laughs> uh, but this actually I spoke about this stock a few weeks ago on another show. SMCI, very interesting chart. <clears throat> Super microcomputer. Uh, so let me ask you about this one on, on Trade Finder too, and it's uh, it's not you know something that I've been that familiar with, but uh, uh, heck of a move there. Here we go again, Ducks. I mean, uh, can we find a chart without a gap? I mean, for real, um, it's just amazing. So uh, th those those gaps will get filled someday, but it may be way into the future before that occurs. It has broken back below the 10-day moving average today, so some of this vertical stuff is coming back. And this is a good example of what I'm talking about with these vertical moves. They just don't hold. Uh, so when you, you don't chase these vertical moves, let it come back, let it consolidate some of it. Let's see if it can hold 220 because there's support right there from the last vertical move that it had. 
So it ran up and then held there and then went vertically again. Let's see if it can hold 220 and then perhaps uh, something can happen from that point. Uh, again, it looks pretty strong. I don't know that we need to, uh, well, the ADX is starting to work its way back down. This one may be running its course. Um, so if you're long, um, keep a close eye on that 220 level. If it breaks that, then you, you got to run for the hills and get out quick. Um, I don't like the break of the 10-day moving average today. It does look like it wants to at least test 220 here. So this um, this may be heading into its pause period here from uh, from this uh, big move from 140 up to, I mean, it doubled, right? 140 to 280 in, what, two weeks? So it needs a rest. All right, we're into our last four minutes of the show here. So we're going to try and pump out a few quickly. All right. And one here for Adobe. Um uh, obviously, they had earnings out were great. Uh, they're riding that AI wave of confidence right now. Uh, how's that one looking? Yeah, and uh, I saw that. Yeah, they were expecting $3. They earned 391 So, yeah, they blew it away. Uh, saw that after hours. But, it, it, you know, the interesting thing, it, it ran up in earnings. Like, everybody expected it. So there must have been some sort of a whisper along the line. So it runs vertically up. And then... Uh, beats earnings and goes higher again, but it just look it opened at ridiculous levels, 520, way above the 10 day moving average. So more of this vertical stuff, way over the 10 day moving average. It's way overbought. Um, you know, let it come back down to earth. Uh, if you could, I don't know that it comes down to 440 either. So I don't know how far these are going to come down, uh, ducks, but they're going to come down some. I'm, you know, please uh, believe that. The, don't chase these vertical moves. You'll get caught on the other side. They'll, they'll make some quick moves to the downside, consolidate a bit, backing and filling, we call it, and then you'll get your opportunities to participate if you haven't already. If you're long and you caught this move, I'd be taking some gain and uh, let it come back down and then you can re-enter. Um, so uh, this just, even if it goes higher from here, it won't hold. It will, it'll eventually come back down. It's too vertical, but impressive numbers, no question. But it ran up in anticipation of that, and then they got it. And so, yeah, I just, this has got to rest. It's just way too overbought. And the 10 day moving average all the way down at 460. So, yeah, these, these stocks are, it's, it's not so time. It's like 1999 all, all over again. All right. Where's Prince? Yeah. You know? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> this, this last question party like it's 1999 because that's what the market's doing party like it's 1999 <laughs> um this last stock we're going to look at and this chart's a doozy first solar fslr i i've been around a long time i don't know what to do with this chart um well uh <laughs> i i don't know either it, it, it looked like it was taken off to to run here um like like we really had something going there and it hit that fib level you can see the 38.2 percent fib level it's not normally the strongest of all fib levels but it just like bam smacked its head against it and that was it which was a surprising so a little bit of a pullback after that big move i thought that's warranted um but then it's uh it's decided it does want to come down and fill those gaps um uh, right away so I think we uh, look at this, it's below the 10-day moving average. I think First Solar very likely comes down to 180 now, completely fills that gap, and then uh, um, see if it can hold that 180 level. If it can hold 180 and bounce, I think that's probably a pretty good place to look for a long position here. Um, but uh, yeah, let it let it finish this downward move. You know, the old expression, don't catch a falling knife. That's what it's doing right now from those highs back uh, uh, in mid-May. So it does, it seems like it wants to test 180. Let's see if it can hold it. There's some support there. And then, you know, maybe we have a a, a shot at it then. But yeah, that's, you know, sideways, 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 gap down, gap back up, island reversal. And then back to that bizarre price movements going on in that one. Okay? I, I hear you. All right. We've got 30 seconds left here. Last one we're going to look at is Nike, NKA. Yeah. Uh, good old Nike. Yeah, you know, the retail side of things has been, um, you know, it's been, difficult uh with uh um the the chosen few are doing really well and the rest are, are struggling but um nike's come back uh it's made a big move uh, back after uh you know some of the uh which was one of the uh was it uh it wasn't foot action but one of them foot locker foot locker yeah thank you foot locker had some problems and uh, seemed to drag nike down with it uh or vice versa 
Uh, but we held 105, which was an area that it, it had some support uh, and it held it. And so we're now back up, but we're testing an area of resistance. So it was support back in December. It was support back in March. It tried to hold as support in May, but it broke below it, came down, tested this for support level. But now 115 is resistance. Old support becomes new resistance. It's a bit above the 10-day moving average. So this is a pretty easy one, I think. If it can break above 115 with follow-through, I think you're going to see it run back to that 125 level. But it's got to do it first. Don't, don't do anything with this now. Uh, it, it could back and fill a little bit, even back to 110, where the 10-day moving average is. Uh, you're going to look have some sort of a doji here as well. So let it break above 115 with a follow-through day. Then I think you get a move to 125, but um, it, it could back off a little bit here. Um, so that's this, this chart is a little more defined as far as you know where your stops would be, et cetera. But uh, it's good to see it bouncing back to the upside after a pretty vertical move lower. And that's the you know, last thing is vertical moves work both directions. And we, we've been looking at a lot of vertical moves to the upside. You get a vertical move to the downside, those get retraced too. So um, that's what's going on now. So really, that's a good chart finish on, Ducks. Listen, Rob, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Some great stocks to look at this week. We'll be back Friday next week, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, make sure you tune in and tell all your friends and family to tune in as well. Rob, yeah, you have a great weekend lovely. and happy Father's Day, mate. Happy Father's Day to you too, Ducks, and happy Father's Day to, to all the dads out there that are watching and enjoying this, these live Q&As. It's a lot of fun. Take care, everybody.